As GCN presenters, we are enormously privileged in that we get to visit some of the biggest and the best cycling events in the world. And they don't get much bigger than the Tour de France. I'm here in Brussels, ready for the Grand Depart 2019, and I want to show you some of the cool things that I see on the run-up to a Grand Tour like the Tour de France. Take you on my journey, effectively, starting with the team presentation, which is about to start just through there. But here just now is Vincenzo Nibali. reasonably large crowd gathering for good reason and that is because just behind me there Peter Sagan is signing a few signatures just got back from his training ride two days prior to the Tour de France and this is the kind of thing that I love anybody can come here to the hotels of riders before and catch a glimpse of their favorite cycling superstars and in fact we've got a young South African team here that have come over to race in Belgium and caught a glimpse of Sagan themselves day made I think for them Got a little tip for you now if you come over to watch the Tour de France either before it or during it uh, often the team mechanics after the team have been out training or in the stage will collect the used bottles and put them near the team truck uh, ready for a member of the public to collect if they so wish only take one though leave them for other people don't be greedy a huge pink EF education first trailer We have now arrived at the biggest BMW dealership in Brussels. This is where Katusha Alpesin are holding their pre-Tour de France press conference. But we're not actually here for that. The reason that I have come here is because Alpesin, the co-sponsors of the famous caffeine shampoo, have set up a mobile barber's unit where I have been promised a fresh new cut from a top New York stylist. An offer I couldn't refuse. Go. If you're wondering why the large crowd has just gathered behind me, it is unfortunately not anything to do with me. Uh, my appointment time has been pushed back somewhat because Niels Pollitt, second at Paris Bay this year, has just turned up for his haircut. I'll get there in the end. <laughs> We've been around a few hotels and most of the teams have gone out on the road for their training. Uh, behind me we've got Arkea Samzik, that is Maxime Boué, and alongside him, Warren Barguil. Not entirely sure why they're on the indoor trainers, outdoors as opposed to going out on the road. We are near the airport, so it's not the most scenic roads around here. But what I have noticed is that newly crowned French champion Warren Barguil hasn't got his French champion's jersey on just yet, but he's got the most novel use of a bottle cage I've ever seen. Got his mobile phone in there. Sprint legend Andre Greifel behind me being interviewed by German television at the moment. Now one of the other things that I love about the run up to a Grand Tour like the Tour de France, the biggest in the world, is seeing riders in their absolute prime just before the start. Veins on his legs are looking unbelievable at the moment. He's a sprinter of course, but he's very, very lean indeed and clearly ready for the start of the race. Now I've got to wait for Alex Dowsett. He's six-time national time trial champion, but been waiting here half an hour now. With the Tour de France starting in Cycling Mad Belgium this year, a couple of companies have taken the opportunity to create some pop-up shops in the centre here of Brussels. Amongst them, Canyon. Uh, they've brought a quite tremendous collection of bikes, which I'm about to show you right now. Uh, but this is also an opportunity for potential Canyon customers to come and get themselves measured up so they get the right sized bike. Right, first things first, hard to miss this one, isn't it? Uh, this is Richard Carapaz's bike from the recent Giro d'Italia, which of course he won. All pink, as you can well see. But moving a little bit further on down here, uh, they've also got Lisa Klein's time trial bike. This is from last year's World Championships, where Zip created different coloured wheels for each of the riders, which was quite spectacular when you saw the photographs from the side when they were in formation. Further around here, one of my favourite bikes of all time. Uh, this is the Dutch National Championship Edition Canyon Aero CFSLX of Matthew van der Poel. There you can see him using it at the Tour of Flanders where he finished on the podium despite that horrific crash when they were descending on the way to the Quaremont. I just think that is a beautiful paint job as I think I've said in a previous video. Right in the centre here is the rather large Canyon Aero CFSLX which belonged 
to Nils Pollitt. This was the bike that he rode to the runner-up position behind Philippe Gilbert at this year's Paris-Roubaix. And as is tradition for Paris-Roubaix bikes, it's been left with all of the dust and muck from that race on it. Although a couple of people have been touching it here where it's cleaner than it should be. Moving on further back. The current world champion, Alejandro Valverde. Uh, we saw this briefly as well at the Tour of Flanders where I was looking at some of the cool pieces of tech. Uh, the rainbow bands are plentiful, aren't they? Not only are they on the frames that here of his ultimate bike, they've also got them on the Physique Saddle, which is the Antares. They've also got them on the Bora Ultra 50 wheels from Campagnolo, and they've even got it on the Power to Max power meter there in the center. But it's not the only world champion's bike here, because just to my right, is the bike of Cadell Evans. Uh, this was the one that he rode in 2010, having won the World Championships in Mendrisio in 2009. A race I was actually in, not till the end, uh, unlike Cadell Evans, who went on to win it. Uh, it was actually in 2007 that Canyon first sponsored a top-level professional cycling team. Uh, that was Unibet. So to win the World Championships with Cadell Evans two years later in 2009 was very special indeed. I think you'll agree, that is quite the collection of bikes in this pop-up shop here in Brussels. I've got one more thing to show you though, if you just pop around here with me. They've also got a Quaramont fridge and you can guess what's inside it. Jingle, jingle, jingle. Special edition Quaramont beer, complete with the yellow jersey in a pattern of cobbles. And then just next door to Canyon's pop-up store is Raffer's, which is even bigger. Uh, apparently, they had this pop-up store last year here in Brussels, but of course, with the Grand Depart here, they decided to do the same thing in 2019. They've been organising daily evening group rides, which I can tell you have been very well attended if tonight's was anything to go by. They also had the EF Education First press conference here. So if I'd have been about half an hour earlier, I would have seen Rigoberto Uran, uh, TJ Van Garderen, Mike Woods, all here as well as Jonathan Vorters and actually tomorrow night as we film this which is Friday night the day before the race Jonathan Vorters is going to be right here talking about his brand new book but since this video is probably going to come out after that that's not much news to you this is Julian uh, whose normal job is in New York where he is the velo barber because yes, you travel around on your bike to yeah, your clients I decided to combine the two things I love the most cut hair and ride my bike so Perfect. one day I was going over the bridge and I was like, I should, this is my brand, this is my thing. Yeah. Like, so I biked to my client's house all over the city. Yeah. It's kind of fun. And now you've got to come to the Tour de France. I can't believe it. <laughs> so one day my, I bought a bike and then I was like, I bought a Cannondale Super 6. I remember. And I was like riding and riding to my clients and then I noticed that instead of being 20 minutes, 30, 30 minutes late all the time, I was actually getting to people on time. And one day I was talking to my dad about what I was doing and then he's like, Velo, he said Velo, I was like, what's Velo? And he's like, it's bike in French. I was like, oh, that's amazing. Like, you ready? Go on. I feel a little bit bad now because after complaining that I was sitting behind Nils Pollitt and Alex Dowsett to get my hair cut, I've just realized that the legend that is Eric Zabel has been waiting for half an hour behind me to have his hair cut. He's up there on stage now. One of the things that I always enjoy in the lead up to a Grand Tour is watching the mechanics doing their work and last minute preparations in the couple of days before it starts. Uh, so we've come to the hotel where Bari Merida, Astanar and EF Education First are staying on the couple of days leading up to the start in Brussels. Uh, Bahrain have been putting the stickers on the last couple of vans. They've also been measuring up Vincenzo Nibli's I'm not going to say spare bike because I think it's his third one, but just making sure that that is exactly the same size as his first bike and the spare bike that will sit on the roof. Uh, meanwhile, over here, EF Education First just put on some fresh bar tape onto one of the riders' bikes. I've just bumped into a couple of fans. Boom, boom. Uh, slightly ironically, when you are warming up for a time trial, you don't want to get too warm. Uh, France is notoriously hot, of course, during July, so Bar and Reader have brought these almost industrial sized fans, complete with a cooling mist so that when riders such as World Time Trial Champion Rowan Dennis are warming up for the team time trial and the time trial which comes in po later in the race, they don't get too hot.
Now one of the things that I like most about the lead up to a Grand Tour is watching the riders reasonably relaxed on the couple of days leading up to it, going out on their train rides. Uh, we're here at Jumbo Visma where we've just watched Wout van Aert, Dylan Gruenewegen and their GC leader Steven Kreisbach heading out for a short training ride. Uh, other things of note here include Richard Plugger's bike just there, he's the team manager of Jumbo Visma here. Now as you can see, he's got a tubular tyre taped underneath his saddle. Not a rare sight actually. Uh, today of course the riders will have a team car behind them with spare wheels, but if you go to the team during the classics for example, where sometimes they go out training without a team car, you'll often see riders with that spare tube there and also with the pump in a cut off bottle in a bottle cage just as Richard's got there. You also might be wondering why we've got two Team Sunweb bikes at the Jumbo Visma truck here. No rumours going on here, they're not discussing contracts as far as I know. Uh, this is simply the fact that last weekend uh, they helped them out whilst they're at the Belgian National Championships. They brought the bikes here in order to give them back. More haircuts. Thank you for all your free content. Oh, amazing. I Thank really you very much. I really love the Big ones. Thank you. Well, cheers. <laughs> cheers. I just managed to land myself a free beer on the way to the team presentation. Cheers. 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 Nice to meet you all. Wow. Thank you very much. I have to say, this is very cool. The riders are held at the Place Royale before they ride through this Gallery Saint Hubert on their way to the team's presentation, uh, which is at the Grand Place, which we'll go to in a minute. But the atmosphere is electric in here. What a way to start your race. And now we've arrived at La Grande Place, which is where the team presentation is taking place just behind me. And what a venue to have it. And a huge cheer for Thibaut Pino, one of the potential winners of this year's Tour de France. I'm loving being here, I have to say. I'm gonna try and get round to where the team presentation actually is so we can see it. We have finally made it to the point at which we thought we'd be able to see more of the team presentation, but actually, even though I'm six foot two, I can't see very much of it at all. Still a fantastic atmosphere. So good, in fact, we've had to swap microphones so you can actually hear me, even though you probably don't want to. Uh, just being introduced onto the stage right now, though, is Jakob Fulsang, who at 34 is one of the favourites to win this year's race. Wait and see how he gets on. Final team have just arrived. It is Team Ineos, home of last year's champion, Geraint Thomas, who I think is just about to be introduced onto the stage. Been a while since I've been to a Tour de France team's presentation. I have to say I've thoroughly enjoyed myself, particularly getting that free beer from a fan along the way. And we shall finish this video with me stood next to an elephant with a bike painted on it and an elephant riding a bike painted on it. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed seeing some of what we see when we're on the run up to a grand tour such as the Tour de France. If you have, please click on the thumbs up icon just down below this video. Get enough likes and views and we might even do it again. If you didn't like it, don't do any of that and we probably won't do it again. Right, as you probably noticed throughout this video, I've been wearing a French themed shirt, which is available right now over on shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com if you fancy it. One more video for you to watch right now. It's down here and it's Ollie looking into the science behind team time trials and the team's choice of equipment.